in scoring and leads the team in hustle. The Bonnies have five seniors starting. All five have a combined 329 games played together. Your officials, John Gapney, Tim Clockerty, and Jerry Polly. We're underway with a championship on the line. Marquette in their white unis control the opening tip. This is their point guard, number 22, Tyler Kolick on the top of the floor. He's a lefty. When he gets in the paint, he's trying to make a play for others. You've got to play him as a passer. Kolick tried to thread the needle to the big man, Kirk Weff. Now down low, Olivier Maxens Prosper. They call him Omax, and he opens the score. Here's that vaunted starting five for St. Bonaventure. All five seniors all returning from last year's NCAA tournament team. And a turnover. On a made basket, you're going to see Marquette in a 1-2-2 two, two full court or three-quarter court pressure. And St. Bonaventure is going to advance past through that pressure. They're not going to dribble through it. They had a look out for the corner threes. Justin Lewis off the mark. That was something that Mark Schmidt was talking about to his team earlier today at Shooteround. Well, Justin Lewis is a handful for most opponents at 6'7 on that 245-pound frame. They get it inside. Oshunii off the mark with his first shot, Quet the rebound. See, Oshunii is a 6'10 guy that thinks pass first, score second on the block. He's, He's the, always looking to swing it. He was the defensive player of the year last year in the A-10. Here's Lewis, this time aggressive, got fouled. That's going to go on Dominic Welch. Well, Shaka Smart, a homecoming of sorts for Shaka, the 43-year-old head coach at Marquette. He was born in Wisconsin, grew up in the Madison area, obviously made a name for himself at VCU as a head coach where he took that team to the Final Four in 2011, then six years in Austin at the University of Texas, and now in his first year at Marquette has them off to a rousing 5-0 start. He has done a fantastic job early on implementing his defense and I don't want to call it simple because it's not easy to do what they do on the defensive end. But what he's done is he's allowed his players to play with reaction or with instinct versus analytics. And it keeps them from having to overthink and just make plays. Now, it's not quite havoc that we were used to seeing in his time with VCU. But they do like to put pressure on the ball. How is it different? Yeah, well, when they have a dead ball opportunity, it's full court pressure. They're looking to trap in the full court. When it's after a make, it's one, two, two, three quarter court. And they're just trying to use up some time and to try to take St. Bonaventure deeper into their options. This is a veteran team that can go into their third and their fourth offensive options in a 30 second possession. They execute offense with precision. Left hand, Oshun with his first bucket. See Osh Oshun, Oshuni is thinking when Queth is on and pass, and Marcel's going to get called for a push-off. But when he's got another defender on him, he is looking to score, and that's a terrific move to get him started early. Well, Mark Schmitz in his 15th year in Olean, western New York, just about 75 miles south of Buffalo in the foothills of the Allegheny Mountain, as he has built a mid-major monster at St. Bonaventure. 1,800 students. Western part of New York. It's not quite what you call a destination city in this New York, but it certainly is a passionate and proud fan base. Five on the shot clock. And Dominic Welch with the three-pointer. He's usually a slow scorer, so that's a big sign for the St. Bonnie's offense. And he can fill it up, and he can get hot in a hurry. And this is a team that shares the ball. 52% of their baskets are assisted. Here's Kolek, catch and release off the mark. He started finding the mark in that semifinal win over West Virginia. Yeah, he's better when he gets his feet under his shoulders, not a fadeaway from the arc. Early 5-4 lead for the Bonnies, ranked 22nd in the country, and probably higher than that if they get a win tonight. Oshuni showing some touch. Very impressive that he has been able to get going early. He didn't score a lot in the last game, only a couple of baskets. He's already got two baskets here tonight. 7-0 Bonnie's run. And you're not the 
going to see anybody bring a double. No, they're going to expect Quest to play straight up. Omax off the mark. Oshuni with the rebound. He averages seven rebounds a game. Jaron Holmes takes it all the way. There's going to be a foul on the floor with 16.26 to go. This is exactly the way we expected the game to be played. 94-50. Up tempo, up and down. You're going to have to execute. There's no surprises. But there's a lot of action that you have to guard and be disciplined in guarding with St. Bonaventure on the offensive end. And Shaka Sport knows his team's got to get the stance. Jerry Pollard trying to nip things in the bud before things get chippy. We're only three and a half minutes into this championship game. Yeah, you bring the two young men together. You tell them, keep your hands off. So Welch and the Bonnies have one three-pointer made already. This is not a team that shoots and makes a lot of three-pointers. They had four as their high watermark going into the semifinals when they went bombs away against Clemson. What was it, 10 of 12 in they the second 10 half? 10 of 12 in the second half. Here's Justin Lewis, and he has been a revelation beyond the arc for Shaka Smart. He has been fantastic. That is his 10th made three of the season. He made five in the old Miss game. He is now nine for 16 yeah. from three in this building <laughs> it's a new during this weapon. tournament. Welch tried to squeeze it into Oshuni, and Oshuni is going to need to take a blow. Mark Schmidt doesn't go very deep into his bench, but that first five is certainly effective. Play together, and the thing that he likes to say is lost in the fight. As long as winning always remains the principal thing they stay focused on. And they've done that here. A couple of transfers are the big guns. Kolik is one of them. Morcel the other. Kolek threw that one away. Here's Kyle Lofton. The A-10 preseason player of the year is in the scorebook. That's a tremendous play. A back tap from Lofton to allow him to get up the floor for a layup. Here's Cam Jones, who's been hot from three this tournament. His first shot of the game, too strong off the back iron. You've got to make sure you take care of the ball against St. Bonaventure. You've got to make sure you D up on the, their end of the floor. And you also protect the defensive glass. You can't give them extra possessions. They're too efficient offensively. Now Koulibaly in. And he grabs the offensive rebound. The pit transfer gets it out to Jaron Holmes. No good. Speaking of transfers, 32 in white. Daryl Morsell, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year a year ago. Never really had the opportunity to score when he was with the Maryland Terrapins for four years. And he starts his Marquette season scoring 20 points in four of the first five games. When you think about all of his ability to play on the defensive end, he just got cleared in October with a shoulder surgery that he had. So he, he has not had a full preseason, yet he has been terrific in picking up all the nuances of what Shaka Smart, Shaka Smart wants his team to do on both ends of the floor. He's already become the leader. And look at who Shaka has on the floor right now. Everywhere you look, it's youth. Freshmen everywhere, including Oso Igadoro in the middle. The senior, Holmes, no. And we got a foul on Abdul Kareem Koulibaly. This is one of those times where Shaka Smart might be rolling the proverbial dice, having five first year players in his program on the floor simultaneously. Well, I think that's one of his advantages, right, is the depth that he has and the number of players that he can bring off the bench versus what you've already illustrated about St. Bonnie. They only like to play maybe six. Three games in four days. Nice extra pass. Cam Jones, the left-hander, with the triple in the corner. And you get your young guys some early confidence and some early reps in the championship game. Cam Jones had 15 points in Marquette's first three games. He had 18, 12, and now three in this game. Left hand, Koulibaly off the mark. Igadoro with the rebound.
stolen away by Lofton. And the little extra step. And he dances his way to a layup. What a play. See, that's Kyle Lofton back-to-back -back making plays on the defensive end for easy scoring opportunities. No whistle as Justin Lewis gets into the paint and gets another two. He leads all scorers with seven. Now Jaron holds. And he'll have a chance to score from the free throw line. Well, St. Bonaventure announced their presence last year when they made the NCAA tournament. They were the A-10 regular season champs, and they were the tournament champs going all the way to the NCAAs. This year, no drop-off. They won in the quarterfinal against Boise State by six, and they won against Clemson by three. That grittiness, that togetherness, that veteran presence, all leading to comeback wins for Mark Schmidt's club. I had St. Bonaventure in the first round of the NCAA tournament, and they lost to LSU, and it was a tough matchup for them because LSU size and length and then their ability to, to match the physicality on the perimeter. One of the advantages is a player that typifies this program, like Jaron Holmes, undersized, thick and athletic, very strong, the ability to make plays off the bounce or off the catch. This is a well-put-together offensive scheme. Holmes two for two. He's preseason all Big Ten, or all Atlantic Ten, I should say, second team. We've already had five lead changes in the first seven minutes of this game, Dad. And Kyle Lofton has made three plays on the defensive end already early. Now they switch, and you know they're going to switch one through five. You have to be prepared to take advantage of the mismatches when that happens. And you can't dribble over dribble against the switching team, especially on the top of the floor. omax has got a hand on it out of bounds. It'll stay St. Bonaventure basketball. And we're singing the praises of St. Bonaventure, rightfully so. We should also give a shout-out to the Bonnies fans. They have come down to Charleston and turned this into the Riley Center South. Yeah, they have taken over downtown Charleston and King Street. And they've had a lot of fun. And that's saying something because Marquette's got a great crowd here too. Ten on the shot clock. Attaway, too strong. And here's Greg Elliott, one of the rare veterans on Shaka Smart's roster. Redshirt junior out of Detroit, number five in white. The one more, Omax. Can't pay it off. Really good D, good discipline defense. In the corner, and that shot's off from Linton Brown. One point St. Bonaventure lead in the early going of this championship game from the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic. Stevie Mitchell, Elliott for three. That's his specialty, then. 45% outside the arc from last year, and that's his first basket of the season. That goes off Koulibaly's knee and out of bounds. When we come back, more on the men's basketball version of Iron Man. That's what he is. Third in the nation last year in minutes per game. Back to back, first team, all 10 honoree. This year, he's a Wooden Award top 50 candidate and a Bob Cousy Award top 20 candidate. And deserving of all of those accolades. He has four tonight. But St. Bonaventure finds themselves down two to Marquette. Stevie Mitchell thought about the three. Instead, he gives it up. And an offensive foul going the other way. A little hesitation from the true freshman, Mitchell. Oshuni draws a charge. Now he's a tremendous shot blocker. Almost three block shots on his career per game. That's how good of a shot blocker he is. And he does it pretty much staying out of foul trouble. That's a great rotation on the back row. He's the active career blocks leader in blocks per game. 2.7 per game for Oshun.
Coming up on nine minutes gone by in this championship tilt from Charleston. A good ball pressure by Marcel to stuff that roll to the rim. Well, Feast Week rolls on after this right here on ESPN. Don't go anywhere. Arizona, number four Michigan. The title game of the Roman main event from Las Vegas is coming up. What a doubleheader on ESPN. This early in the season, so many great basketball matchups. There's a shooting with an easy two. What a great slip. They get everybody lifted above the free throw line. Everyone gets a touch. The ball switches sides. Terrific execution. Lewis can't knock down the three. Now it's Dominic Welch. on the shot clock for Marquette. Elliott in traffic. Lofton comes away with it. Here comes Bonner. And a kickball stops play with 10.01 to go. And now Quef and Kolek will check in for Shaka Smart. Watch this play right here. Watch Oshuni. He's going to roll to the bucket. This is a terrific slip. The execution has everyone spread out. The middle of the floor is open. This is just a great read and a terrific job to get the ball to the middle third. What did we talk about at the top of the show? Youth versus experience. Experience won that one. Jaron Holmes. His first field goal tonight, he has four. This is a gritty, physically tough St. Bonnet venture team. 6-0 Bonnie's run. And Cola can't end that. That's the way you got to play him, though, Rich, right? I, you know, I keep saying he's a ter terrific passer. When he drives, he's looking to make a play. You got to make him finish. Here's Tyler Kolick had 18 points and eight assists in that semifinal win against West Virginia. Morcell. I think Welsh got a piece of that. Yeah. Oh. What a needle throw! Holmes to Lofton. They've done that a time or two. Anything you want on the largest lead, but it's just six. I think they're such a great rhythm team. And Swedish Fish, that's what he eats before the game. That's our hoop scoop. Give but me you know some what? of that then. Hey, exactly. But this is a rhythm team. They're in a really good rhythm right now. So let's see what Shaka Smart team can do to disrupt that. That might help. Justin Lewis with nine in this contest. See, when they can score, they can set up their pressure. And you try to take time off St. Bonaventure's shot clock because they are so good at getting deep into their options. What about this one-on-one -on -one matchup? Lofton guarded by Morcell. High-level stuff. Here's Attaway. Catch and shoot. Off the mark. Now Morcell in transition. Shaka Smart wants his Golden Eagles to push the tempo whenever they can. Morcell for three. Only seven points for Daryl Morcell against West Virginia. And he's struggling tonight as Jaron Holmes has six. They rebound and they fill and go. It's part of the advantage of being an undersized team. It's basically four guards and Oshuni. Joplin off the mark on the corner three. It goes out of bounds and obese St. Bonaventure basketball. Riley center south. It's a real thing inside the TD arena at Charles. Basis whenever the Bonnies are at home or on the road and they are hungry for a championship. Packed house inside here, packed house at the Burton and Olean, and so far they've been treated to a six-point lead for their bodies. Cheers to all the folks inside the Burton tonight. <laughs> I think Debbie Antonelli's looking for a, a free pop or two next time she visits Western New York. Well, I've been known to have a post-game pop. Looking for Oshuni. 
He's working on Quek. Catch and shoot. And we talked about Dominic Welch being a little slow to start games after he hit his first shot. He hasn't hit another one. Here's Justin Lewis. Oh, a lot of contact. Jump for three, and it's good. So you throw that dripped pass, and you make one more swing of the basketball, and you get an open look. 14 of David Joplin's 15 field goal attempts have come from beyond three-point range. He's got another one now. Marquette doing a good job communicating their switches on defense. Holmes trying to go one-on-one, -on -one, and he gets blocked by Quet. Kirk Queth averaging three blocks a game in the early going. Another three attempts. That one too strong. Here's Morcell. The lob. And Queth finishes off the window. Good execution and nice job by Ashuni not to try to block that one and pick up a foul. And really good patience by that Marquette offense. Back there, to a one-point game, Deb. There are a lot of times that Marquette plays with an awful lot of offensive maturity. Shumi off to a great offensive start. He has eight. See, both teams are able to get scoring in the paint inside the, the restricted area. That's your high percentage look. Marcel, top of the key. Still off the mark. But Queth gets him a fresh 20. Kolick back to Queth. And Kirk Weth, the transfer from Oklahoma, will go to the line and shoot two. I love watching Tyler Kolick work. He is a four-level passer. He can advance pass in transition. He is very good in their two-man game at passing. He is also really good under duress, and he can throw the skips in advance pass passes as well. And he's the reigning A-10 Rookie of the Year. He played yeah. last year against the St. Bonaventure team. Actually stuffed the stat sheet against him, 17 points. Four rebounds, three assists for Tyler Kolick last year as a member of George Mason against the Bonnies. Well, our Week 11 Monday night football matchup, the Giants traveling to Tampa to face Tom Brady and the Bucks. Kickoff at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Plus, ESPN Deportes, and the app. ESPN 2, of course, will have the Peyton and Eli version of Monday night football. Quef goes one for two. One possession ball game, under six minutes to go. Full court pressure from the Golden Eagles. Handled easily by St. Bonaventure with the finish at the other end. One of the first things I talked about was advance pass, not dribble through the pressure. That's exactly the way St. Bonaventure attacked that full court press. 20 paint points for the Bonnies already. Elliott, the floater, got altered. And Oshumi comes away with it. All alone, Holmes. Good tip back. And the bodies have it again. Lofton, all by himself. Can't convert. Well, he aimed that one instead of shooting it. Sometimes you're too wide open. Yes. And look at the steal by Dominic Welch, and he gets fouled. Watch the passing. You welcome two, you get the ball to the middle, you reverse it, and then you finish with a flush. Oshuni, the first in double digits with 10. And he is an energy giver it, on the St. Bonaventure does team. Does he have three dunks already in the game? That's what you call a high percentage look. And this offense looks like it's clicking for St. Bonaventure. Let's not forget, they were seventh in the country in scoring defense last year. Yet Marquette is only down two possessions. So as good as St. Bonnie has played early on and executed, Marquette, Marquette's grit and toughness is still here with less than five to play in the first half. Down just four in their leading scorer, Daryl Morcell. Zero so far. Holmes, good shot fake. 
had to double clutch it, and Omax comes away with the rebound. Good re recovery by Kolek. That time Marquette did not switch. Here's Cam from the corner. Can't get it to go. Tantalizingly close. That's the shot that Mark Schmidt was warning his team about all day today. Can't let them have open corner threes. Prosper, another rebound. He had a career-high nine boards in their win against West Virginia. Now down to four minutes in the first half. Switch. Morcel. Prosper. Corner three. Short. You don't see Marquette sending any, anybody to the glass on those corner threes because you don't want to get a long miss and a run out by St. Bonaventure. And Marquette was 8 for 13 in the second half from three-point range in their semifinal win. Right now they're just 4 for 15 in that department. Maybe relying a little bit too much. What a blow by the Hezzy from Kyle Lofton. He is on his game in the title. Exactly the way you'd expect a mature point guard to play. Largest lead of the game for St. Bonaventure. Ranked 22nd in the country and rising. Three minutes left in the first half. That one's blocked. Taken away. Here's Lofton again. Kulabali pulling his way to the basket. Now they're trying to attack Justin Lewis on the block to try to put some pressure on him. He's such a good scorer. It's a great way to try to keep him from getting hot is attack him on the defensive end. This is why, because he can do this. Off to the right on that one. Kolik too strong. And you talk about live by the three, die by the three. Right now, Marquette is in trouble. That ball goes out of bounds. A golden opportunity missed. And the leader of these bodies, Kyle Lofton, frustrated despite his team being up eight. Two and through the big guys. Oshuni has been terrific at finishing, but they've been easy because they're on the backside of full court pressure. And that's the, uh, the strength of St. Bonaventure. They welcome being pressed because they're unselfish and they move the ball so well. They advance pass as well as any team in the country. Eight point St. Bonaventure lead, but if you've watched any of Marquette's games, you might say the Golden Eagles got them right where they want them. Off the window, and that's Attaway with his second bucket. The reason I say that, uh, right. Marquette has trailed by at least 12 in each of their last three games, and as we know, Marquette is still undefeated. They've been down double digits, and they have found a way to come back. They have great resolve about them, and the analytics and adjustments that Shaka Smart makes at this point in the game right here to get the right personnel to get them into some sort of rhythm. They're turning the ball over in the live situation, and they're not going to be able to recover from that. It's uncanny. The, as different as these teams are roster personnel-wise, there are some similarities. As we said, Marquette trailed by double digits in each of their last three. St. Bonaventure's trailed at the half in their last three games. Most coaches don't like to play from behind, but at least you know you can. They wave off the basket. The foul is on the floor. Tyler Kolick pleading his case. That foul is going to go on Jalen Attaway. And Marquette is a team that averages 78 points a game in that 5-0 start. They've only held to 23 here in the first half. And another foul called. But you know what? Fouls to give and to keep them from getting into some sort of offensive rhythm. Make them inbound the ball again against your defense. And now number four, Linton Brown, is going to check in. A 6'5 redshirt sophomore out of Delray Beach, Florida. 
Doesn't get a lot of minutes, but certainly learns a lot from the guys playing in front of him. Counting down to one minute to go in the first half. Good hands, a deflection by Holmes. Seven on the shot clock. And a near steal by Lofton. Great <laughs> touch and take. Justin Lewis. He is becoming more and more reliable for Shaka Smart. You can count on him. He wants the ball. He can make plays at the end of the shot clock. Just a 6-7 red shirt freshman. Up in the Warriors host the Sixers with our coverage starting with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern. And you see a colorful list of alumni who have played in this Charleston Classic who have gone on to NBA glory. Zone by Marquette just to change it up again. Call timeout to set this up. Holmes, deep three. And the rebound by Brown. Pulled the trigger. I love the call by Shaka Smart to give him a different look coming off the timeout. And now shot clock is off. It'll be final shot time with the ball in the hands of redshirt freshman Tyler Kolek. Kolek, tough shot, left hand, no good. One second left, loft in, it's good if it goes, and it was close. But still, Oshun Oshuni, Kyle Lofton, and the rest of the St. Bonaventure bodies take an eight point lead into halftime. Game and every aspect, offense and defense, he's a tremendous finisher, and he's evolving into that late shot clock guy for them. That when you need to make a play, you put the ball in his hands and he can make it happen. Well, the shooting, it was not as pretty as what we've been used to in this Charleston Classic Tournament. Especially for St. Bonaventure, they go one for ten from three, but they still lead it by eight. The good news for both of these clubs, they played much better in the second halves of their games than in the first half. Yeah, this is a punch for punch right here. I, I mean, I expect this to be... Uh, really a, a game that slows down, meaning both teams execute inside 10 seconds on their shot clock. Not a lot of turnovers. And you cannot make back-to-back -back mistakes in a game that's this high level. Here's Jaron Holmes surveying. Going up and getting the bucket. And the bucket. Strong. Gets to his right hand. Gets Kolick in the air. That's just a veteran play. So patient. We've been talking about it, right? Under control, poised, always balanced. Jaron Holmes, a 75% free throw shooter so far this season. I don't think St. Bonaventure is a team that you can speed up. You know, a lot of teams like Shaka Smart will play multiple looks. He'll play their defensive scheme. They'll full court press off of free throws. They'll three quarter court press off of made baskets. But you can't take away the pace that they like to play with. You like to change it, but you can't. Look at that look ahead. And away. Largest lead of the game for 22nd ranked St. Bonaventure. They run off of those long rebounds quickly up the court. Marquette has trailed by a dozen in their last three games. All three of them, they ended up winning. Illinois, Ole Miss, and West Virginia. They're down 12 now. They love to run, and they like to get out on the break. Away. That works. He's a 6'5 redshirt senior from Logan Sport, Indiana. Transfer from Miami of Ohio. And he's got six points tonight. He has one of the best fadeaway jump shots in the middle third that I have seen in a long time. Let's see how Marquette responds. Morcel working hard and can't find the bottom. How did that come out? That was halfway down through the cylinder. Oshuni has seven rebounds to go along with his ten points.
inside. Everyone, everyone moves without the ball. Nobody's stationary. The ball never gets stuck. This is an unselfish basketball team. The lob and Queff couldn't finish, but the foul's going to go on Dominic Welch. This is a great leave at the rim that Queth just got to finish that. You know, one of the things we asked Shaka Smart about is playing two or through the post, and he said, you know, we have to throw the ball in there to Queth. We've got to let him make some decisions for us. Got to have a presence in there. You have to collapse the defense. He also told his team at the end of practice today, we need to play with more of a sense of urgency. If we do that, we'll be champions. That's how we closed practice today with these young Marquette Golden Eagles. And as we mentioned, they've trailed by a dozen or more in each of their last four games now, including tonight. And they're a perfect 3-0 in the prior three. Quef can't convert. Full court pressure off the free throws. There's the trap. Add away from the elbow. I mean, you just get to your spot. Nataway's got a terrific mid-range game. Now the lead extended to 13, the largest of the night for the bodies. Prosper using those long strides, but it's pinned by Attaway. He is bouncing. Oshuri with the flex. Timeout, Marquette. With their largest lead of the game against Marquette, Shaka Smart sets a goal. 32 deflections a game, and that sign that you saw moments ago, they only have nine so far. Why is that? I I'm going to tell you why, Rich. It's because St. Bonaventure moves the ball so well. They, the ball never gets stuck, so they forcing rotations all the time by every action that the ball moves. So therefore, it's late on a closeout, late on a rotation, and you never get a chance to get great ball pressure to be able to get a deflection. And then right out of the timeout, an offensive foul called and a turnover. Holmes, aggressive. Exclamation point on it right now. The Bonnies have more points in the paint than Marquette has total points. 36 26 at this juncture. High hands. Here's an open look, and it's closed out. Blocked by a shooting. That's a foul by the freshman Cam Jones. Marquette's in the danger zone, Deb. I love this right here. Look at this leave at the front of the rim for Attaway, who has an incredible vertical. Look at the hops Whew. on number 33. Mark Schmidt calls him a mismatch guy. He says he's only 6'4", but he plays like he's 6'8". Yeah, totally. He plays the four spot for them. He's undersized. He goes most nights, he's got to guard guys that are a lot taller than him and longer. Yet his speed and his athleticism and his upper body strength make up for that. There was a technical foul called. We believe it was on Shaka Smart. So that sends Kyle Lofton to the line to shoot two and 87 percent free throw shooter he knocks the first down and now he's in double digits with 10. And now Shaka is speaking directly to Jerry Pollard. And Jerry Pollard is not going to have much more of this. is not happy 26 points is not a lot of offense and now the official scorer calls Jerry Pollard over and 
now the St. Bonnie's faithful trying to get on Shaka Smart a little bit. So bottom ball. And they're up 19, threatening to blow this one out in the championship game. Float game. No good. Wet the rebound. You know, coaches get technical fouls for a lot of different reasons, but usually they get them for a purpose, like to try to set the tone or tell his young team he's in the fight with them, right? But they got to dig in right here. They got to get in a stance, and then they've got to make shots when they're open. See, Marcel is wide open for an extra opportunity on that possession. Darren Morcell really struggling on the offensive end after his first four games were so dynamite. That one rolls off for Jaron Holmes. And we have a foul that's going to be on Holmes, and it'll go the other way. We're at the 16-minute mark. Four minutes gone by in the second half, and Shaka Smart is on the court still cleaning his heat up for it. So now watch Shaka Smart. He smacks the floor, which he's trying to get his team to lock down and play D. He's inside the coaching box. But he gets a technical foul because the officials think that he is referencing them. Now, we don't know what took place before that, but it clearly looks to me like Shaka Smart was pleading his case, and I was talking to my team. Jones. And Cam Jones gets fouled. All right, so now let's put this into perspective here for Marquette, right? They're down 19. All right, if you can score on the next three possessions and get three stops, now you get it to single digits and you get it back to a workable margin. You can't try to bite it all off at one time. But you got to make your free throws. Right. Those three stops are called the kill zone in Shaka Smart lexicon. And they're going to need a few of those tonight if they want to get back in this one. Cam Jones goes one for two from the strike. And now Shaka Smart is able to set up his full court press. See, I think St. Bonaventure is really hard to press. They all can handle. They advance past the ball so well. Draw two, reverse it. That one tipped. Debbie Antonelli with the save. I always knew you had good hands. Well, you know, me. and I just want to let you know I am right handed. You know, I caught that with my left. <laughs> Jaron Holmes right in front of us will inbounds for St. Bonaventure. No, and a rare not. mistake by Kyle yeah. Lofton and a foul call. That is not a good decision. That foul on Attaway. Look at that. Hey. I was there too. I was just there yeah. late. I did a clinic yesterday, so I've been handling the rock for. <laughs> Jones. Now Greg Elliott. Just his second game of the season. Lobs it. Queth couldn't handle it. Marquette still has no field goals in the second half, and we're nearly five minutes gone by. Well, it's been dial it up scoring for St. Bonaventure. They've been able to get whatever they want. And see, there's Justin Lewis reaching in with two hands. When you have to guard smaller guys all the time, and there's where Attaway, that's the advantage for St. Bonaventure. He's an undersized four player. That's two fouls on Justin Lewis. And shot to Smart will go to his bench. Queth will take a rest, and Oso Igodoro checks in at his stand. Marquette went 8 for 13 from three-point range in the second half in their semifinal comeback win. They're going to need a little more of that tonight against St. Bonaventure. I'm so impressed by Mark Schmidt's team and how well they move the ball and how unselfish they are. And steps out of bounds. And I mean, last night at the Shriners tip-off dinner, and the Shriners Charleston Children's Classic has been unbelievable, right? I mean, we've had such a time here with the Shriners. They've been such a great sponsor of this event. But he was talking about, Shaka made reference to Mark Schmidt's playbook like Santa Claus's list. It just keeps unfolding and unfolding and unfolding. That's how many plays he has. Offensive foul called on Daryl Marcel. Good position by Oshun Oshuni. Those are two kids going at it. Both defending defensive players of the year in their respective conferences last year. 
he just has Oshun Oshuni he has such a good sense of when to block and when to rotate and draw a charge. That's the second charge he's been able to draw tonight. And from bad to worse for Daryl Morsell. 0 for 7 from the field, no points, and on the bench for Shaka Smart. And on a team Marquette that prides itself on turning the ball over and getting deflections, only five turnovers tonight for St. Bonaventure. Holmes, steady. Hips and shoulders game. He gets his hips and shoulders past his defender. You want balanced scoring, Deb? Kyle Lofton, 10 points. Jaron Holmes, 10 points. Oshun, 12 points. Jalen Attaway, 10 points. Last year, one of the impressive numbers about this group for St. Bonaventure is between the, these starting five players, they were, they were between 21 and 13 percent distribution of shots. That's how balanced they were. You usually don't see that. You usually see somebody that one or two players that take the majority of the shots. This team is balanced. They share the wealth. I thought that was such an impressive number about a very strong intangible about their team. Only UCLA has all five starters back from a team that made the NCAA tournament last year. These St. Bonaventure bodies are benefiting from that as well. Igaboro tried to go for the dunk over the defense, and a foul gets drawn. They're saying it's on the floor, and it's going to go on or shooting. That's the first foul on Oshuni. So Elliott inbounds to Lewis. And that's a traveling violation on Igadori. Then it's starting to get late early here in Charleston. <laughs> Shaka Smart's Marquette Golden Eagles down 20. Cam Jones exhorting his team on, the true freshman, slapping the floor, screaming at the top of his lungs, trying to get this defense to spark the offense. And now Jaron Holmes a little gimpy after getting fouled. Jaron Holmes turns 23 years old next week. You talk about getting old and staying old. A lot of coaches like to preach that as a way to win. Kyle Lofton's 22. Holmes turns 23 next week. Oshun is 23. And Jalen Attaway is 23. And they stuck together and came back for a special purpose this season. I mean, you could he listen to Mark Schmidt. He talks about it. It was how how flattered they are to be invited to such a prestigious event. You know, in the 50 years of their program, they've never, they haven't been ranked. And he has really done an amazing job. And the support, look at that hustle right there. Like, these guys are hungry. They are competitors. And that cannot please Shaka Smart, who immediately goes to the, his bench. The free throw shooter got the rebound, and four white jerseys are on the lane. See, that right there is going to be frustrating in film session tomorrow. If you're Marquette right now, you can't look at the scoreboard necessarily. you got to play. you got to play the next play. Home sits that one. Again, the storyline coming into this championship, youth versus experience. How would Marquette's youngsters handle the pressure of a big moment against a veteran team like St. Bonaventure? And so far, advantage, experience. Well, I'll tell you one alum who's pleased with the 20, 22-point lead right now is our buddy Adrian Warjanowski. 
He's a Bonnie Dave Bonnie, Bonnie guy. I've been texting with him all day and throughout the game. He's really excited about these five guys. He says he'd take these five players at St. Bonaventure in the last five minutes against anybody in a game. And he calls Mark Schmidt, the, their Bill, or excuse me, their Bob McKillop, who's the head coach at Davidson, who's had incredible success. Well, they haven't hit many threes tonight, have the St. Bonaventure Bonnies. They're one for ten from long distance, and yet, with the way they're dismantling Marquette, you could say they've had their fair share of Woj bombs tonight. Now Oshun Oshuni steps to the line. He'll shoot one and one. 12.52 to go. And both teams are shooting free throws on every subsequent foul. Step through by Joplin, nothing doing. And don't expect St. Bonaventure to take their foot off the gas either. These guys are relishing every minute they get to play together. I mean, we're seven and a half minutes in, and Marquette has two points in the second half, Deb. There's Lofton working on the true freshman. Oh, and they get Kyle Lofton. With the arm bar. That's the third foul on Kyle Lofton looking to create a little airspace. That'll be interesting. Your team's up 22. Kyle Lofton has three fouls. He's played in every minute of every game. Does Mark Schmidt take him out? No. Why would he do that? <laughs> There's another he's, freshman, David Joplin. Ten on the shot clock. Unless you're trying to give some other guys some minutes, right? There's Lewis for yeah. three. I'm telling you, he wants the ball on a late shot clock. He's terrific at making plays. He's going to continue to get better, Justin Lewis. First field goal this half he for looked, Marquette. He looks like one of those guys to me that his game hasn't grown into his body yet, or his body hasn't grown into his game. Either way you want to assess it. The one more. And Lynn oh. Brown can't capitalize. Lewis thought about it again. He has such great footwork, good hands. He can catch everything. He moves without the ball well. He's not afraid of contact. And look at how they just wall up on defense. And too much dribbling, and Stevie Mitchell goes behind his back. His head goes down. And that's when the wall came. Attaway, blocked from behind by Joplin. And again, the veteran presence of mind, Kyle Lofton. Let's not rush. Let's get late in the shot clock and get our shot. Holmes. That's levitation, Holmes. Mark Schmidt is like the sixth offensive player over there on the sideline. He's like another point guard when the offense is in front of his bench. Showtime now. And Kyle Lofton makes it look easy with a dozen. Mitchell with the floater. Much better decision by Stevie Mitchell. The St. Bonaventure team is, is built to play in the 50s or they could play in the 80s. Well, in OEN, you know, they call them Iron Man 5 2.0. And I don't mean years. I'm talking about pace, points, 50 points, 80 points. Although some people might think they could play in the 50s. Well, back in 1967-68, Bob Lemire led a Bonnie's team that they called the Iron Man 5. Everyone playing almost every minute of the game like these guys do. This is Iron Man 5 2.0. And what started as a competition 
has turned into a coronation to a Final Four rematch, Gonzaga and UCLA from Las Vegas. Dickie V, we wish you the best, man. We're so glad you're back. He's the leader of our team, that's for sure. That's right. A tireless warrior in the fight against pediatric cancer. And he got so much love, especially on social media, when people found out about his struggle. And that's really helped him get through this. His doctors have been fabulous. I've been in touch with Dick. And he says, the fact that my doctors endorse the fact that I stay active helps me keep the faith that everything's going to be okay. Yeah, he, he's a fighter. You know he's resilient. Mickey V is a household name. As Alex says, he's the best, baby. Jaron Holmes finds himself back at the line. He's already collected his fifth career double-double. He's got 15 points and 10 rebounds tonight against Marquette. And he joins Oshun Oshuni in the double-double department. 14 points, 11 boards for the senior from Pleasantville, New Jersey, Oshuni. And there's Kyle Lofton on the bench. Take a picture of this, folks, because it doesn't happen very often. Four-year captain for Mark Schmidt. Jones off the mark. And Marquette gets a fresh 20. David Joplin scores just the second field goal of the half for Marquette. Blocked from behind, but they're going to call the foul on Quest. Well, coming up immediately after the conclusion of our game here in Charleston, we're going to send you out to Las Vegas for the Roman main event, and it is one. The final, Arizona, number four, Michigan, in the title game. Can't wait to see that one. Stay tuned. It's coming up right here on ESPN. And now adding insult to injury, Shaka Smart's Justin Lewis will have to go to the bench saddled with four fouls and his team down 25. Well, what you're going to see out of Shaka is not backing off the pressure or not changing what they do schematically. They're going to still continue to try to teach his young guys the system he wants them to play in. It's still November. We haven't cut the turkey yet. They got off to a 5-0 start. Remember 10 freshmen, we've done such a good job of documenting the old versus the young. Yeah. And starting 5-0 in and of itself is quite a feat. Only Duke at 5-0, and and now Purdue also at 5-0. and Those are the only major conference teams that are off to that good of a start this season. And one opportunity for Queth. Really good work on the weak side glass by Queth. That'll be the third foul on Jalen Attaway as Oshuni checks back in for Koulibaly. Quetz completes the three-point play. they want to take some time off the clock that's how disciplined they are offensively they can go deep into their options and tonight we've seen some explosive and impressive offensive plays by St. Bonaventure but when you think about it, it's more like death by a thousand cuts with them look at that one on the shot clock and a little mid-range pull-up by Jalen Attaway, and they score. They have confidence, and, and they trust. They're really good in their roles. They understand what they're supposed to do. There's Amari and Ellis who's checked in, number two in white, getting some run for the first time here in Charleston. It's an overused term in basketball. It's called chemistry. Mm -hmm. And you know it when you see it. And you can see it all over the Bonnies. 
And listen to this crowd. They're on their feet with still seven minutes to go in the title game. They're going to continue to work for the perfect possession. One like that. Back to back pieces of execution by St. Bonaventure. They're going to call a delay a game. I know Shuni. Look at the balance of the Bonnies. Four players with 10 plus, a couple of guys with a double double already. Marquette with 16 turnovers that has allowed St. Bonaventure to score 26. And you see Daryl Morcel is going to shoot the technical fouls that technical foul was called on Oshuni for slapping the backboard and hanging on the rim only 12 points for Marquette in this second half now it's not like they were setting the world on fire in the early part of this season offensively anyway but they did come in averaging 78 points a game yeah, four baskets so far in the second half and that's tough you, we talk a lot about St. Bonaventure's offense, but really their defense is very connected as well. They can switch one through five. Joplin for three. I'll tell you what, Joplin has showed us some stuff here this yep. weekend. He has played really well off the bench. Turned 19 years old while playing in this tournament here. A couple of days ago, celebrated his birthday. And that's the thing you have to keep in mind if you're a Marquette basketball fan. This team is going to get much, much better as this season goes on. Well, I don't think Shaka Smart has the entire system in. You know, I think you give them uh, some stuff so that they can play, not so they have to think so much. And over time, this is, they think got pieces now. Look, they're going to be a tough out. Look at Oshuni with the block, and now they're going to call it goaltender. <laughs> Look at that face. Oshuni can't believe it. The NCAA career active blocks per game leader thought he had another one there. Instead, they give the two points to Kirk West. Clearly, by his reaction, he thinks the ball is still <laughs> on the way up. And now Jaron Holmes at the line shooting two. And it should be noted that uh, no St. Bonaventure fans have left the building. Oh, they're going to celebrate. Holmes five for eight from the stripe tonight. And you can't nitpick too much against this performance, but... Jaron Holmes probably wishes he had a little bit of a better showing at the free throw line. Well, you know, all coaches are similar when it, it comes to this point in the game. They're still trying to make their teams better. How can we get better? Will that cut work in the A-10 championship? Will that pass work in the A-10 championship? That's the way they think. Right. That one swallowed up by Shuni. Does he get... Uh, Two blocks for that one because he blocks one with the right hand. I don't left. think so. Oh, only one. Okay. Only one. Lofton got pushed over the half court line by Daryl Morcel. And that foul's going to go on the freshman Ellis. Boy, Shuni has just dominated on the inside. And you hear the crowd behind us. Shoo! They play so well getting the ball to him on the block. He's capable of scoring. He's a put-back, drop-off rim runner is what I call. He doesn't really have a lot of post moves, but he's very effective in doing those things to help his team. And he was all defense in the Atlantic 10 his first three years with the Bonnies. Let him in blocks, second in rebounds a year ago. And maybe most importantly, when the lights were shining the brightest, Oshun Oshuni stood out the most. He was the A-10 tournament MVP last year. So he, he wanted to play with Kyle Lofton. That's part of the reason why he's here. According to Woj, he turned down a lot of bigger D1 scholarships. Maryland, Georgetown, just to name a couple. Well, again, this is a team that came back with a purpose. That NCAA tournament appearance last year was 
a success, but it also was a failure. They lost to LSU right. in the first round, and that left a bad taste in yeah, their mouth. They didn't play well. And LSU played really well. Under five minutes to go. Counting down to a championship. The 22nd ranked St. Bonaventure Bonnies have had their way with the Big East's Marquette Golden Eagles. Look at that effort. Even in defensive transition, they don't give up an easy three. Dominic Welch coming from behind to partially block that shot. How about a shout out to the folks here at the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic for doing such an outstanding job hosting this tournament for the eight teams that were here and the ESPN event staff just knocking themselves out to put together a dynamite week in the low country. I know we've had a blast. Yes. It's been a lot of hard work, but a ton of fun. It's all first class. And thank you to the Shriners Children's hospitals all around the world for everything that they do to help families make it easier for their kids. We've uh, had a great time getting to know Alec all week. And uh, he's been a terrific spokesman for this event. He's a sophomore at Northwestern, a journalism student, so we wish him well. He's yes. got some exams coming up this week. We'll hear from him again at some point. Tonight's a night to celebrate if you're a St. Bonaventure fan. Up 24. Cross charges. We know he blocks shots. He's got a double-double tonight. His 17th career double-double. And I would anticipate he should be close to averaging a double-double this season before the year is out. Right now he's about six and seven. Six points and seven rebounds. That number's going to keep going up. Oh, he is 8 for 10 from the field tonight. Yeah, that's what happens when you're dunking everything you touch. You know, when you watch St. Bonaventure and you study them, it's not just that they can make shots. It's the way they make them. It's their ability to cut. It's their ability to pass. It's the scoring cut, but it's also the exit cut to the perimeter that helps create space. And they're, they're all very athletic, and they're very connected on both ends of the floor. That one picked off by Morsell. Not sure why he went to the left. Maybe it's because he heard footsteps with Oshun Oshuni <laughs> bearing <laughs> down on him. He never gives up on a play. Deep three from the sticker. Dominic Welch hit the first three of the game. Doesn't have a point after that. But St. Bonaventure hasn't needed him. They get double doubles from Jaron Holmes, from the player of the game, Oshun Oshuni. And of course, Kyle Lofton stuffs the stat sheet as well. 12 points, three boards, four dimes. You know, Marquette's going to get better from this, right? This is going to be a chance for them to learn. Shaka Smart's going to have some great film. You're going against an older team. You're going to see teams that pass and cut like this in the Big East. Again, at the end of the shot clock, Jalen Attaway. He's got 14. The countless numbers of hours that these young men have spent in the gym getting ready for this season so they could do it together. And what's it about? It's about winning championships. And now they're going to have another one to add. With the exploration board. Mark Schmidt is about to win his 250th game as the head coach of the St. Bonaventure Bodies. And this one, something tells me, is going to be extra sweet for Mark. You mentioned to Bonham that Mark Schmidt is a Boston College grad. He's got great basketball lineage, hardworking. 
Well, don't forget, Monday Night Football with Peyton and Eli is on ESPN2 and ESPN Plus at 8 Eastern. They're going to be breaking down Eli's former team, the Giants, who take on TB12 and the Buccaneers. Monday Night Football coverage also available on ESPN, of course, and the ESPN app. These five guys on the floor together. Get used to it, even in, um, you know, the end of the game. I yes. mean, this is what they do. It's, it's special moments together like this that they can remember as they get ready to clear the bench. This is why they all came back. Because there were six other guys on the team that went to the transfer portal. These five are special. And a timeout called for the sole purpose of allowing the He's like, look at the score. Why'd you call timeout? Mark Smith saying, I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just trying to get my subs on the floor. Shot clock violation, a minute 31 to go. Well, clearly the frustration for Shaka Smart. He's seen so many good things from his team, and yet he knows they have so far to go to reach their potential. I don't mind seeing this fire from Shaka. He is energy personified on the sidelines. And sometimes you let the, the moment get the best of you. He talks about process all the time. I mean, relationships, growth, and victories. Those are the three principles that he says he builds his team on. Basketball and sport are emotional games. There's no question. Look at the emotion in this arena by the fans. Look at the players. Well, Mark Schmidt has told us that in the last 30 years, this might be the most challenging non-conference schedule that St. Bonaventure has ever faced. They've got UConn coming up. On the 11th of December, they have Virginia Tech on the 17th of December, but they've already banked wins against Power 5 teams and a major conference team like Marquette. Here's your all-conference team brought to you by the Shiners Children's Clap, Charleston Classic. Lofton, Holmes, Justin Lewis, Taz Sherman, and Emmanuel Acott from Boise State. And we're being told now that congratulations goes to Kyle Lofton being named the tournament MVP. Only fitting that it's someone from St. Bonaventure who won their first two games in closer fashion than tonight. Tonight it was a blowout, almost from Jump Street. Well, I believe Mark Schmidt knows exactly what he's doing when he puts his non-conference schedule together. So he's got a bigger vision with these these guys on his team. And now just 36 ticks left before they start cheering in Charleston and bouncing at the Burton in Olean. Oh, there's something happening at the Burton tonight, <laughs> that's for sure. Up next for Marquette, a date at Wisconsin. They're also on the road against Kansas State. And then on December 11th, Shaka Smart and his young Marquette squad go up against second-ranked UCLA. Ellis knocks down a three. 
Shaka's team still pressing now. And his team down 18. Well, Deb, I'll say it now since I know we're going to be off the air quickly once this hits triple zeros. It's been an absolute pleasure to be in your home city of Charleston, South Carolina, calling games side-by-side -side in person again yes. with a full crowd inside TD Arena. Yeah, it's been great, Rich. Um, I'm so proud of the way Charleston has showed up and the way our hospitality state has entertained all these great fans that have come to Charleston. We used to be a really well-kept secret. Not anymore. And it's been Chamber of Commerce-like weather while they've, everyone's been here. It's been fun working with you. It's great to be back. And some stalwarts to shout out, even though everybody on our crew has done a great job. John Tobias, our statistician, has called every one of the 12 games that we've been here. He has been the reason that if I ever sounded smart during a basketball game, <laughs> JT's the reason that I sound that way. And our stage manager, Taylor, has done great work next to us as well. Making sure everything is in order. We have everything we needed. Just a terrific job all around by our ESPN crew. Yes, yeah, you. You could start celebrating. <laughs> yeah. Jalen. Yeah, you too. 1.1 seconds. Congratulations to the St. Bonaventure Bonnies and Mark Schmidt giving them yeah. a little bit of a reminder. Yeah. Show a little respect right here. That's right. Let's finish this off and then we can celebrate. Some sportsmanship. That one short. Your final score in the Shriners Children's Charleston Classic. St. Bonaventure with an exclamation point. Wins it in convincing fashion over Marquette. 70-54. to 54. They're the champs.